Joseph Osai, you've made a name for yourself as a Cincinnati Bengal, but when you think of home, where do you think of? When I think of home, I think of two places. I think of where I'm from, I think of Nigeria, mm -hmm. and then I think of Houston. I was born in Nigeria. What do you remember about the early part of your life out there? Very free-spirited. You would come home from school, throw your backpack on the ground, and, and go outside, and the whole neighborhood was outside playing soccer, where it was a community, almost. But it was still, you know, there were still the worries of a third world country. And luckily, my mom worked hard enough. We did decent, so we didn't have to go through all of that. But it was, uh, it was, it was a roller coaster. What was your house and home life like in Nigeria? Um, it was, it was, it was just my mom, because my dad was in the uh, the United Kingdom trying to make some money and and send back to us. Why did your family decide to move to the U.S.? Crazy story. My mom hates gambling. So she's always been like that. Uh, her friends were going out and they told her, hey, come on, let's go play the visa lottery. So she ended up playing and then she won. Like two or three months later, she got a call saying she had won. She thought it was a prank at first, but they were like, no, you won like eight green cards. At that moment, the only idea I had of America was um, from Home Alone. <laughs> so, so I thought when I'm moving to Houston, of all places, I'm ready to see snow, huge buildings, you know what I mean? If your mom wasn't even thinking about going for the green card lottery, yeah. why was it such a no-brainer that, oh, you won, let's move? Because it's America, <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you mean, you know what I mean? And we had, we had heard of America, we had heard of people going to study abroad and getting scholarships and becoming doctors and lawyers and eventually having to move back after they got that. English is spoken in Nigeria. English is spoken in Nigeria. What was your first impression? Because I guess language wasn't too much of a problem. Uh, you would think so, but the, the, um, I'm, you won't be able to tell now, but it slips out sometimes with the accent. The accent of mine was very thick. Growing up, you know, kids, whatever they don't understand, they make fun of. Being an immigrant coming from across the world. Oh, yeah. Oh, how yeah. difficult was, to, was that? I was trying to get rid of it as quick as possible, trying to get those kids off my back. So how did you and your siblings combat bullying besides eventually getting rid of your accent? I don't know if I should say this because I'm not promoting any violence. <laughs> uh, one of those bullies, I remember his name, redhead kid, Alex. Um, huge guy, uh, and back there when we were all small and tiny and skinny. We finally stood up to him on the bus, and we told him to shut up. He was chasing us, me and two of my, my, two, two of my younger brothers. He just uh, chased us to the door. The door was locked, we couldn't get in. So I was like, all right, man, let's do it. So we turned around and we beat him up. <laughs> so that was kind of the last day we got bullied, to be honest. As an immigrant, you tread lightly because you know, you're always in there thinking, oh man, any slip up and I could be sent back or I'm not really from here, so I shouldn't step on toes. So it, it didn't even, we couldn't even fathom the idea of standing up for ourselves almost. After that, we, we were like, okay, we don't have to keep taking this stuff from people, especially when I have two of my brothers with me, my older sister with me. We can, we're, we're, we're a pretty strong group. We can stand up for ourselves. So ever since that day, it was great. You get a little bit older, you go to high school. Yeah. All Houston, basketball, football. Mm -hmm. They didn't play those sports in Nigeria. How yeah. were you introduced to them? Football was, again, um, through my uncle in Houston. Uh, I remember watching a game at his house, and I thought it was rugby at first. Then I saw different movements, and I was confused. And I remember watching Ben, Big Ben, uh, drop like a bomb to Antonio Brown, and he caught it and the whole stadium erupted. And that's when I fell in love with the game because I was like, man, how can that one guy make this many people this excited? I'd never seen anything like that. You were a four-star recruit out of high school. When did you realize, oh, I'm pretty good at this? My coach, my coach, I was, um, it was junior year in high school. He said, I didn't want to tell you this, but there's a scout here to see you. It was Cincinnati, University of Cincinnati. I remember that. No I remember, kidding. I remember that. And if you keep playing like you're playing, I promise you, you're going to play college ball. Before that statement, college ball had never been in my mind. I was like, I'm going to college to run track. I'm going to go to the Olympics, hopefully one day. It was like a check mark, almost like a dream come true. Like your, your scholarship is faithful. You're going to go to school in America. You're going to get an education. If, if all else fails, you're going to get an education from America. So you accomplish the goal. You accomplish the American dream almost. Why did you choose football if you thought you were Olympic level good at track and field? Again, Coach Goodman, the, 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 the recruiter, and he says, football in America is a professional pace this much, track in America is a professional pace this much.
And I said, all right. I, I said, I, I hear you, brother. I was just thinking about uh, my family. I saw I ended up choosing football. I heard about the money. And you choose one of the biggest football schools one ever. One of the biggest. Biggest brand, Texas big tradition. <laughs> you hit this ground running. You wind up by the end being an All-American. As someone who was born in Nigeria, takes so much pride in, in their Nigerian heritage, how did it feel to have that stamp All-American next to you? You know, I really didn't think about it like that. You know, for me, it was, it was, it was an accolade. It was an, it was an achievement, almost. And at Texas, when you're an All-American, they, they put up a plaque of you. Seeing that my freshman year and going, I want one of those. I want to I wanna be immortalized. Because I've always had this thing of wanting to live forever. I don't know where it came from. And then it made me fear, fear my parents' birthday because when I'm thinking, this is going to get dark. But I was thinking, um, oh, one day they're going to die and I'm not going to see them anymore. And then I was like, oh, man, one day I'm going to die. And who's maybe, will anybody remember me? To me, seeing that plaque, it's like, okay, I'm immortal. Like everybody from now till that kingdom comes, when they come into Texas building, they're gonna see that plaque. So it's always been a thing of me to, to win those, those All-Americans, those district champs, those state champs, those um, conference championships, because it's gonna go up in the banner. It's gonna be immortalized. And anybody who walks through will say, okay, that guy was on that team and he made that happen. And that's what we're striving for. After Texas, you get drafted. Mm -hmm. The affirmation that you did it. Yeah. That moment when you get your name called, what do you remember about it? Um, plenty of emotions because um, I was expecting myself to go higher. But again, God works in mysterious ways and I will not want to be on any other team. Glad I slipped. I'm glad I'm, I was able to get picked up here because the call from the Bengals went like, we don't know if you're going to be here. But if you are, we're going to be surprised and we're going to get you. The Cincinnati Bengals select Joseph Osai. There was a lot of emotion. Man, we've done it. And then it was the man. We haven't done it because we have to keep going. It's easy to get in. It's harder to stay in. You get to your rookie season. Yeah. You get hurt in the preseason. Mm -hmm. You then had to watch the team go on to go to the Super Bowl. How difficult was that for you? That was one of the, it's funny because during the, during the draft process, one of the questions the, all the scouts were asking was, what's one of the hardest things you ever had to go through? And I was during playing football and I was like, nothing. I've never been hurt. I would always have to say, oh, moving to America. Right after I got drafted, couldn't walk for the first time in my life. It's one of the hardest things I've ever had to go through. And your, your first full season, you come back. You, you, your name was circled on a lot of experts. Like, yeah. hey, this guy could be a difference for the Bengals defense. Yeah. And then you come and you prove it. How gratifying was that for you, especially down the stretch? Down the stretch was, I, was what I'd say I started to find my foot in a bit, but there was, there was a lot of growing pains because I had missed a year of, of football, and that, um, that definitely takes a toll. I remember there would be days I'd be tired, my body would be hurting, but I'd think, man, just this time last year, you weren't even around the team. You couldn't even feel the energy of a win. So it was, it was amazing. There's still a lot I could have I done better, and that's why I'm excited for this season. One thing that really stands out about you is perspective. The way that last season ended with the penalty at the end yeah. of Patrick Mahomes. You've had now so much time back at it. What type of perspective have you gained from that moment? You know, I was mad at myself for, for a while. And, um, but but, I, but I, I've, I've, I learned to forgive myself and, and, and move on because it's, it's a new year. And right now, Oh, that's on my mind is redemption. Uh, I think a lot of my teammates have, have, have learned to forgive me too. People say it wasn't your fault, whatever, whatever. It, at the end of the day, it's a team sport and we played the game together. And as a team, we were tied 2020 and I made a mistake. So that's forever on me. I, people can say it's not on me all they want, but I, I know it's on me. I know I made a mistake. I tried to pull up. I should have pulled up. I should have tried harder, I guess, to pull up. But um, it didn't happen and I, and I messed up. Um, it's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. Say, so I, I hope the fans can forgive me. My actions are better than words. And every, every day, every game, I'm working to get back there and, and get that redemption for sure. Why do you think legacy means so much to you? It's the ultimate reward for me. And because I, I, I hate losing more than anything in this world. If I win, I want it to be remembered. Winning that Super Bowl or that conference championship is that ultimate prize of, okay, 
you won, and now everybody for the rest of the time is going to know that you won.